A espaçonave do som. No norte do Brasil, you have like for instance the techno brega movement, which is a very interesting movement. Techno brega means uh, the mix between techno, especially like sort of electronic beats from the 80s, and brega means kitsch or cheesy. So it means techno cheesy. Amazing stuff. It's it's excellent. I love it and it's really great. Este homem muito usado na mão do Senhor nosso Deus, que está orando por você e sua família. Vamos lá? Eu sou produtor musical, faço os remixes de Tecnobrega, lá no meu estúdio aqui em cima. A minha esposa, a minha mãe, Catarina. Aqui o meu pai, onde está trabalhando aqui, ó, fazendo uma prateleira para mim lá para cima, para o meu estúdio. DJ Beto, Beto. Beto Metralha, Cyber DJ. Primeiro a gente vai ouvir a música, né? Ouvimos a música na rádio. Aí depois entramos na internet, baixamos ela em algum, em algum site de, de transferência de dados, né? Aí trazemos ela para o computador e, vem, e, e ouvimos ela para ver se tem condição de fazer o remix, né? Tecno Brega, na verdade, é uma vertente do, do, do Brega Calypso, né? Nossa, aqui de Belém do Pará. O Tecno Brega nada mais é do que a retirada dos instrumentos acústicos. É totalmente eletrônico. Por exemplo, eu, eu sou um produtor musical, mas eu não sou músico. Não dá pra gente utilizar esse próprio baixo dela, uhum. porque é um outro baixo. Uhum. É um baixo de um estilo da é música. O, o nosso é tum, 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 tá entendendo? É outro, é outro baixo, então tem que ser criado com as mesmas notas. have like a music producer that has like a recording studio probably a very small one but with good equipment so they invite the artists to these studios and they make the CDs and what they do is that they deliver it to the street vendors so that the street vendors can replicate that so the only people making a profit out of the CD sales are the street vendors the musicians don't expect any money whatsoever from releasing the CDs. Oi, meninas! Aqui do comércio, eu faço o T e o C do Ciclone e o S do Super Pop. Ficou bem? Tá chique, maquiagem. Ah, aqui você, você encontra a música que você quer, né? É toda selecionada as músicas num CD. Tem MP3 também que leva 150 músicas, 200 músicas, na loja tudo que gosta aí. 115 músicas. Só a partir da manhã que a gente vende umas 300 peças. E é muito procurado quando é... Procurado. Quando é bem selecionado, assim. Por exemplo, tem Melody, tem Tecno. Olha aí, rapaz. Já é madrugada e você não chega A cabeça aquela dúvida onde você está Ando pelo quarto pensando em você Ligo pro celular, não quer me atender Eu sinto um vazio no peito 
Vou mais botar o Pinambá por causa da DJ, que são volta de gostosa. Bate potência gostosa. A Agra tá gostosa também. De aparelhagem, which is the sound system, is a very important element of the culture of the techno drag. So what happens is that the different sound systems compete among themselves about who has the most cutting edge updated equipment. They already realize that CDs is not a good business model anymore. CDs are merely an advertisement. They organize the parties in the weekend and then you have like 5,000 people going to your parties. And when they do that, then you make money. Fantástico Prêmio Terra do Pilobá. Rapaziada, eu sou o DJ Dinho da aparelhagem Fantástico Tupinambá, a aparelhagem número um no Brasil. É uma música, digamos assim, mais para divulgação do artista. Não, o artista ele não usa aquela música para ele vender milhões de cópias, né? Milhares de cópias. Aquilo serve mais para divulgação do artista, para ele fazer aquele pequeno show dele. <música> O brega, primeiramente ele vai ser divulgado na aparelhagem, que é o maior veículo de, de divulgação da música paraense. Começa a, a, a tocar essa música e essa música começa a fazer sucesso. Que é pro meu programa. A <risos> mulher. Eu tô toda suja, tô... toda feia. <risos> Agora a gente está fazendo um remix do, da banda Naus Barkley, da música Crazy. Vamos ver, vamos transformar ela em Tecnobrega. E a história desse cara, do, do Naus Barkley, são dois caras. É o Danger Mouse uhum. e o Silo. O Danger Mouse ele ficou sucesso. É, ele misturou o White Album dos Beatles, o álbum branco dos Beatles, com o álbum do Jay-Z, que é aquele rapper. Só que isso foi ele fez isso por baixo dos panos, tipo, ele infringiu o copyright, entendeu? Cara, ele tem muita sorte, né? <risos> pra começar, ele tem muita sorte, tem muita sorte de não estar tá preso também, né? <risos> Mas depois disso, os caras gostaram tanto do trabalho dele que chamaram ele pra produzir o disco do Gorilas, sabe? Gorilas? Gorilas, sei. Chama essa together. Gorilas? É, conhece? It's there. Não tem artista, né? Só é desenho. É, só desenho. A maioria das, das músicas aqui são versões. Né? Eu vou bem aqui, tá rapidinho. Elas são, elas são mais fáceis de, de adaptar pro Tecnobrega, pro Melody. Fizeram versão já até do Guns N' Rose. Guns N' Rose. Guns N' Aha. O próprio Pink Floyd. Dire Street. Calma. Essa versão foi uma das que mais pegou de todos os tempos. Assim. Fred Mercury. 
Queen, né? Essas bandas aí, eles. Agora, a questão da, do direito autoral, o próprio artista ele não se preocupa com isso. Ele não quer ganhar dinheiro com o direito autoral, e sim com o show que ele vai fazer com aquela música tocando, fazendo sucesso. Essa música na parede, Mas, rapaz, se eu vou botar no programa, amanhã na rádio, aí tu vai ver. Talvez, tem um DJ, né? Que queira já fazer o remix da É, o remix da versão. Cyber DJ Beto Metralha. that they were using a new business model. They were recording their concerts live, so on your way out, you would buy the CD of the concert that you had just listened. The Tecnobrega movement in Belém had been doing that four years before the crisis. The interesting thing about this emerging cultural industries is the fact that they are very innovative in terms of business models. The whole industry, they have a lot to learn. Society as a whole has a lot to, to learn from these emerging cultural forms of production that are taking place in the poor areas of the world. We've all got to rethink the way we do our business. It's not going to be easy. Companies are going to change hands, artists are going to squeal, other artists are going to make a fortune. It's going to be a very turbulent time. For me personally, I'm kind of thrilled, but I guess I'm on edge a little bit. Like, I feel like I have to hurry up and do a lot of things because I think things are going to change really drastically. And, you know, it's okay if it affects the business side of it. Just hopefully the music won't get screwed up. You need to take a look at your environment, the limitations of your environment, the advantages of your environment, and then do things which are peculiar to you and be proud of them. Clearly, people will not do things for free. It just is, defies human nature to believe that somebody will come up and they'll paint a picture, they'll do a statue, and they'll just give it away. I mean, it, the, there might be a few people like that, but they probably don't eat very well. Hate to do it, I gotta run. The copyright maximalists, the Hollywood types, say really strict control will grow uh, the industry uh, faster than anything. But in fact, that's wrong. Freedom actually drives a more vibrant, important economy than restriction and control. I think the, the, the culture has changed. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was very much an individualistic kind of approach. And with the explosion of the internet, there's been a, a culture of, uh, it's like a mixtape culture, really, where you borrow from that, you borrow from here, you make a mashup on video, you post it on YouTube. Everybody becomes a creator by taking pieces here and there from other people. Forget whether they steal or not, that's a reality that we're going to have to live with for, uh, for a long time. Okay, I gotta go, man. I gotta go. They're calling you. I think there's absolutely no question that there's a risk that copyright will just atrophy and die. No one will enforce it. We've got to think about it in an incredibly radical way so that it makes sense. You can hear people in their songs on the radio right now that sound riffs that sound just like Black Sabbath. More so than me cutting out Bachman Turner Overdrive will sound like Bachman Turner Overdrive. You know, I can manipulate these sources more so than people ripping off chord progressions can, you know, hide their sources. 
It's the same exact world, it's just, you know, different musical tools. 57% of teenagers have created and shared content on the internet. That's not people peer-to-peer -peer, uh, file sharing, that's about 99%. But this is people actually creating material and making it available. To us, the couch potato generation, this is bizarre. I can't imagine doing that. But to them, it's the natural way for them to understand the world and create. Uh, now, you can, you can either call them criminals or call them pirates and use all the tools of, of the law and technology to block them from this creativity, or we could begin to encourage them by making a wide range of material available that gave them a much better understanding of their past and a much better opportunity to say something about the future. Creativity itself is here on the line and striking a balance between protecting the rights of those who own intellectual property with the right and the rights of generations of future young and old people to create is on the line. This is getting me really pumped. This is a uh, Narles Barkley crazy remix from these Brazilian people. Brazilian music is going so crazy right now. I can definitely chop up those beats at the beginning, always kind of looking for the most, uh, you know, minimal elements. Here's the beat at the beginning. Copy that, paste that. It's all about kind of making it the tightest loop as possible. So this is their beats cut up. So this is just using only the remix So right now I'm making a remix of a remix. I'm remixing the remix. <laughs> so if you want to get kind of experimental on it. I think it goes back to the whole full culture thing when, you know, remixing a Brazilian remix of an American song, you know, it's the idea of passing these ideas down and you know, Narles Barkley had a specific story to tell and they passed it along and the Brazilians reinterpreted it, added their own beat, added their own flavor. It comes back to some guy from Pittsburgh with a laptop and I'm able to reinterpret the Brazilian version and through that I think it's just a spread of you know, musical ideas, you know, that's, I think that's how right now in this day and age is the most efficient way of you know, having artistic growth is passing down of these ideas and recycling ideas. So I can chop this up a little more. All right, so here's the chorus part. Let me put that in here. So just that one second. stuff up. I want to thank you for listening, and I hope that I've shed a little bit light. Uh, I hope I've shed a little, let's cut okay. that. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation as much as I have enjoyed presenting it. <laughs>